what is the true driving force power in the sun and and the odd displays of the sun's magnetic field if we peel back the fiery surface of the sun we see the magnetic fields that we know that they're there by what Scott McIntosh of NCAR and the Wilcox Observatory show us. If you see these, this is how the magnetic field of the sun it flips and how it operates in a very strange fashion. And here's the, the Scott McIntosh's uh, animation of how the magnetic field operates. And if you notice, the bands flip poles as they come towards each other in the middle. So here's my detailed explanation for how the sun actually functions. And we'll look at this chart again of Scott McIntosh's animation or uh, description of the magnetic, magnetic field on the top here and the Wilson Observatory on the bottom. We're going to cut that down into just 22 years here from 1976 to 1998. And that's an, a 22 year cycle that the sun goes through. But I'm saying this is one rotation of the core of the sun. The core is a solid magnetized core, nickel iron core. And we'll move on and look to how I say that core causes all the functions we see on the sun. Okay, this is a rotor from a smart motor from a washing machine, a closed washing machine. And this is the outer rotor, which is, has the magnets on it. And inside are the electric coils that tell this where to spin and how and when to spin. But the point I want to make with this is inside here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 uh, units of magnets. However, each unit has four magnetic uh, components, which are flipped poles. If you notice, if I just take one of them, and go on one end, it's north in here. Then it moves to south, then it moves to north, then it moves to south. Now it's on the inside. They all do the same thing. North, south, north, south, north, south, north, south. And the outside is the opposite. It'll be south, if I get over there, let me show you this way. It's north on the inside, and then it'll be south on the outside. And it's north on the outside, south on the inside, north on the inside, south on the outside, north on the outside, south on the inside. So it's south, north, south, north, and up here it'll be north, south, north, south, north. They're opposite. It's north, south, south, north, north, south, and south, north. So each one has four different opposing poles. So on any natural magnetic material or ceramic or neodymium, you can take one piece of material and you can do various orientations of the magnetic field within that one piece of material. And it's called smart magnets. And there's other types, which I either have shown previously or will show now, of other types of ways you can make an array of magnets like these are arrayed in this position and situation to make this motor work in a particular way. And there's other magnets that are used for other different uh, applications and purposes. And they are particular magnets made in other particular arrays of the poles. But I want to show you this because this shows more of how the core of our sun actually had been magnetized when it formed and we'll move on okay i have a couple of small rare earth magnets here you can see the red sides are north blue sides are south and what i'm showing you is you can have an array of magnets i mean you cannot put them south to south or north to north but you can put them south to north and they hold together see or the other way that way and you can do them this way but they're it's like an x configuration blue to blue and an x and red to red and x but it's blue to red and red to blue 
that way, that way, and you can do it, you know, any way. I can roll these around and it will stay, if you see. So it's like how our sun was magnetized in a spherical manner where you have a four-way pole. The top would be like that, per se, and then the bottom would be like that, just reverse. But you cannot put these this way. It won't stay. It will not stay. I can't let one hold the other one. It just flips, if you notice. It just flips. But if I put it in the X configuration, it works fine. Where it's north to south, north to south, or south to north, north to south. Where the souths are X angled, the norths are angled. And it can do it in any configuration. But if you imagine this in a sphere, it will do the same thing. It's basically a four-way magnet. A north, a south, and a north and a south, but they're opposite of each other. So it's hard to, for me to make a sphere do this because it's hard to get sphere magnets where they're <laughs> half and half like this to make these two pieces be a sphere, okay? But you see how it can work out like that rather than just like that flat to flat it can be diagonal okay and any combination in between and it depends on how it is magnetized okay that's the point of this okay here's our graph at a 22 year cycle and it's kind of it's even on these north and south in the middle you know a red to a red from end to end if you see that red up here to red down here where they would just start to swap you see that red up top blue red up top so this is our 22 year cycle okay we cut it down to that the way we have to realize here is we're looking at a flat graph but the, the sun is a sphere so what we got to do is take this and and make it into a cone or a tube like so and I can't make it a sphere because otherwise this top would be folded down and you know at an angle that is a sphere like a round but I can't do that with this but we're going to do this turn our flat graph into a sphere this is a 22 year cycle and what I'm saying is this is the whole sun as it makes one complete revolution of the core of the sun not the gases around the outside but the core and we're going to get into this later of how it works and even how the uh, sunspots and ultraviolet uh, flares occur on these trends from the 55 degree down to the equator on both hemispheres towards each other in the middle and why they reverse polarity anyway so we're going to take this and turn it into a a, a ring or a cone or a, a, a cylinder because I can't make it a sphere and I'm going to show you what happens why it's this way okay here's our cylinder or round <laughs> spherical shape of our graph if you see it that's how it looks as it goes around because it the Sun is a sphere and we're taking our flat graph and putting it around and if you see we're north and south at my thumbs but it's opposite in the middle and you come back and they change right here at the poles but they're at the middle of the uh, poles in the middle of the sun they're not balanced and i want to show you why that is so our graph shows that this is a graph that we know is how that works by the observatories and from in car and other places so take, keep that in mind. The reason that is because the core of our sun is shaped kind of like this. That is the magnetization of the core. Okay? Believe it or not, that is the same thing you're seeing here. Where you've got big ones in the middle, like there, and the little ones coming into it. The big, the big bulk. Hang on, 
the big bulk of the magnetism south and north, but the little one's coming into it. Turn a little bit, you get the big bulk of a north and a south, and the big bulk of a north and south with the smaller ones coming in. They, they uh, alternate. It's almost like an alternating current. And that is why our graph looks like it does, is because this is how the core was cut or magnetized when it was formed. This is not the gases. This is the core, magnetic ferrite core underneath the gases. And I'll show in a little bit that the North Pole could be one of these two. I believe it's all north on the North Pole and all south on the South Pole, but there are different magnetizations on each pole, each hemisphere that's reversed polarity. And it could be a yin and yang type deal, but these two are identical and we'll get into that in a little bit. The point of this was that the graph is not flat. It is spherical. Well, this is not, but you see the point here. This is what you have if you apply it to a sphere, okay? You'll see some blue on top. If you turn it, turn the graph, then you'll see red on top, okay? Blue on the bottom. And as you turn, the little ones in the middle get bigger, and then it reverses poles, top and bottom, okay? Here's why sunspots reverse polarity. Okay, this is the magnetic field of the sunspots on the sun. On the left, you have blue to the left and yellow to the right on the southern hemisphere, and you have yellow to the left and blue to the right on the northern hemisphere. However, 11 years later, on the right, you have yellow to the left and blue to the right on the southern hemisphere, and blue to the left and yellow to the right on the northern hemisphere. If you notice, on both sides, the hemispheres are opposite. However, every 11 years, that swaps itself again. And I'm going to show you now why that does that. Okay, here's the screen. It just shows this little box of a signal. And here's our magnet, and you can see how it changes the color of it, just getting near it. And this wheel shows exactly how the magnet rotates. If you see the blue side to the left, red to the right, like this, it rotates that way. If I turn it this way, it rotates away from us. And of course, with the red towards us, it rotates that way. So if you notice, if I put the blue towards the screen, it twists the screen to the left, if you see that. It's rotating it, rotates it, just like this. Rotates to the left. The whole magnet is rotating to the left. If I put the north there, the red, towards the screen, it rotates, let it come back on, just a moment. If I put the north to it, or the red, it rotates to the right. Just like this shows, it rotates to the right. But if I turn it with the blue to the right and the red to the left, it's rotating down in the back. If you see that, rotating down, the box goes down. And if I turn it the other way, it's rotating up in the back and it rotates up. It takes the box up in the middle, if you see. So this shows the rotation of a magnet. Okay, on our core, if we apply that rotation of the magnetic field, the south, or the blues, rotate clockwise to the right, and the north, or the reds, rotate counterclockwise to the left. So now let's apply that to our sunspot graph. If you notice here, the sphere on the left has uh, yellow to the left and blue to the right on the north hemisphere, and blue to the left and yellow to the right on the south hemisphere. And the yellow is the north and the blues are south. But now, if you look at the sphere on the right, which is 11 years later, you will see that, or 22 years later, I believe, or 11. But anyway, the blue was on the left on the north hemisphere and the yellow on the right. And on the southern hemisphere, the yellow is on the right and the blue is on the left. Not only do both hemispheres reverse, just like the core, but the, the polarity reverses also. So that's why that does that, is because it, as the poles go, the core goes around, the poles flip, and so does the polarity of the sunspots is going to flip.
Okay, on our core, as the gases go around and we get sunspots, the reason they trek from the 55 degree mark up here where the, the south uh, polarity and the north polarity are next to each other and down here it's reversed, south and north, and here it's south and north. Our sunspots trek from the 55 degree mark here where these two opposing poles start. That's why the sunspot starts, sunspots start there and then they trek down towards the middle where they cancel each other out. And that's on this half, this 11 year part of the cycle. Then when the core is on the other side, it's north on top and south on bottom and it's the same thing. It starts at 55 and they trek towards each other in the core. So you have two different or cycles, 11 years to there, and then starts over here, 11 years to there, and back here is your 22 year cycle. As I showed you with how magnetic fields, the blue is rotating in a clockwise direction. When you look at the blue pole of a magnet, it rotates clockwise. When you look at the or south, when you look at the north or red pole of a magnet, it rotates counterclockwise. You see these two are opposite. And down here, you turn this around, they're opposite, it's just <laughs> reversed. And they start there and they work their way down through here. And this turns a little bit as it goes. But as the gases go, they push those swirling sunspots right along the, the poles. You know, it's not it doesn't stay right there all the time. It moves with the gases from where it's Creating the sun spots at 55 degrees, they'll move around the sun as it as the gases spin around the core, which is not spinning as fast. Those will just keep moving along. In the next video, I'm going to show you in the next video, I'm going to show you why the sun spots start here and why they keep trekking down the what causes them to trek down. But this is what it is. It's the difference in polarities, what causes it in the first place. And in the next video, I'll show you what causes it to track down as it does, or as they do. And it'll be reversed here. So, you know, it's just reverse. Uh, the two hemispheres are reversed in the same place. Then on the other side of the sun, 180 degrees on the other side, they're reversed again, opposite each other, but they're reversed from the other side. So that's what causes the sunspots to have their difference in polarities every 11 years. They'll be this way in the next 11 years they'll be this way and that's why they also trek down from the 55 degrees towards the poles down towards the equator and here it does it again but they're reversed they reverse every 11 years the polarity of the, the of the core of the sun reverses 11 year every 11 years and the sun spots follow suit the direction of rotation is what causes the sun spots to be uh, opposite rotations but I'm going to show you in the next video why they happen as they do so that's what this was about is showing why the sunspots reverse polarity every 11 years that's what this is for